Right then, so as you've just seen, the Ford is running again. Very nice. I'd already uploaded that clip on the old Instagram, so make sure you're giving us a follow on that. But the Ford is helping me out today because we've got our lovely old set of Ringmaster Laylee rolls. These are probably older than me. No, there's no problem about it. These are definitely older than me. They might be 80s, so... And uh, we're starting to see some proper signs of wear, tear and age. So, what we've got on the back here is it's a fairly simple, just upright in the middle, fold up, folds up in the air. They're an easy set of rolls. I think we've got them cheap in a Cambridge sale type thing. And they've served us well. We don't particularly do a lot of rolling on the farm, but every now and again we do firm down a bit of bed work, just depending on weather. For my barley, these have had a bit more use. It's naturally uh, more traditional cereals. You do want to roll them in. Most of the time. Not every time, but most of the time. But um, it is just showing its age. Because of the way that these fold up, we are cracking it very badly at this point and as you can see we've had it cracked quite a few times in the past and uh, looking at the state of this I've said to dad enough is enough I'm going to chop the lot off and rebuild it because if we look around this side that isn't metal worth welding to that is really past its best so He's reluctantly agreed that yes, it needs a bit more drastic action than a patch, which I don't think is him giving me permission to rebuild it, but I think it's one of those things of get on with it, he don't want to know. So I'm going to get on with it while he's out of the yard. So they're currently moving fields with the tulip planter, and I'm going to be chopping this up, and uh, a bit nervous about it, just because it's angles, and I've got to perfectly get them angles right, because um, where this is cracked and jumped up, this is actually making it impossible to unfold this side because it clips in here without the aid of a forklift holding the weight off that hook. So I have got to really try and get this right with the angles, which, as mentioned, I'm a bit of a 90 degree welder. You know, I'm not a bad welder, but angles, yeah. I've got to take some time to do that properly. That's what I mean by that. say the uh, welding's been pretty successful it's been a full day job it does not look pretty if I was making this from scratch I think we'd have been a little bit better off but let me just talk you through what I've done because I didn't start the time lapse until we were nearly finished so these pins are now lowered into the correct place but there's still a little bit of setup needed on those hooks, so I'm gonna have a bit of a tweaking session with them in the morning, I think. Um, and pretty much what I did was I put my farm jack underneath the middle beam, just to hold it in position, tweak this down to the correct height it needed to be at before the crack that lifted it. Cut this plate here to the right size and shape we needed, 
And what I've done is this bracket hasn't changed angle, hasn't changed height once I'd set it up. And I welded the plate perfectly along the seam that that plate had. And then carved out so I could sit there. So that's pretty much the gist of it. So once I had the plate cut, I cut out the old rotten leg with the farm jack in place holding it in the right place and welded the new plate in. Then welded the other side. Now we've got some really thick old steel here, which is pretty damn good. So I got this side built up, I got the other side built up. Dad comes along, ooh yeah, that looks good boy. Put some of the same metal here and at the front. So there you are, Dad. It looks like a monstrous modification, but I've got some faith in some steel that thick. You know, certainly not the best welds I've done, but they've certainly been hot enough to penetrate into the good metal. So we cut all, all the bad metal out, and now we're left with the good. So I'm really happy with how it folded up, folded up nicely onto the hooks. Actually had to pull the hooks up on the uh, rope to get it in the right place. So, like I said, there just needs to be a little bit more set up on them. I think, oh yeah, hydraulic ram's still holding it. As you can see, the ram does actually pull this now. So you can pull them up. So I just need to uh, tweak them just a little bit. Because they don't quite pull on the rope nicely. But I think that might be more to do with the rope. But I'm really happy with this. Pretty good day's work. Uh, did do something else, which um, I'll show you probably tomorrow. Um, we had to recalibrate the steering on Dad's sprayer, which I'll just talk through uh, tomorrow, I reckon, because that was quite interesting doing that. Very simple way of doing it. You literally have a button that you plug in on the back end harness. You push the button five times, and it starts the calibration. How simple is that? Love that. I'll show you that um, tomorrow, I think. But yeah, I'm going to let this dry overnight in the workshop. And um, yeah, get some red oxide on, I reckon. Good old traditional farmer's paint. But um, yeah, I feel really happy with the, with the rolls now. Because they've always been, you know, old, a bit shaggy. But now there's a good bit of strength in them again now. And uh, with big bits of metal like that, we should be able to uh, keep on top of the crack situation quite nicely if we do get a crack. You know, there's enough metal to go out there to uh, sort of cut into and then re-weld and plate over compared to the pindly... To be fair, they're still on the floor out here. I just drift backwards over them. Oh, here we are. There's the old leg, and there was a thick old steel rod down the middle, but it was kind of useless because it was welded to the top, but not at the bottom. So, yeah, basically we just cut straight through them. And uh, it was a shame to cut this piece off, because that, well, the bottom half is a really nice solid unit. You get above here though, and you can see where that's just completely rubbish. It's nothing worth salvaging on that really. I'm happy with how how we've got it now. It's nice to uh, have a bit of fun with the 4610, of course. And uh, before anybody says, um, I did disconnect the battery. I've only just put the starter motor back on. I'm disconnecting all circuits and uh, make sure I don't blow the battery up. So, yeah, quite happy with that. It's that time of year where uh, I kind of want to put the plow on it. But, um, kind of do and kind of don't want to plow with it because at the minute as you can see it's very wet on the floor and uh, two-wheel drive doesn't do too well but I've got the wheel weights so that'd be interesting to see if with the wheel weights that would be enough to make this competitive with four well maybe not competitive isn't the right word but you know maybe this would make it usable in the wet because it it the horrible thing of having such a light tractor is for cultivation sometimes you cannot get the grip and what you want for plowing in sort of wet weather like this which you can do in when it's wet on top a little bit but it's one of those things of some farmers say oh you absolutely shouldn't and some farmers say 
well you can it doesn't matter too much but I don't like doing too much wet ploughing because I think it's a bit of a bad habit to bury some wet underneath even if you are leaving it till uh, the spring but it would be interesting to see because I did do some wet ploughing with this last year um, on a little allotment I've got but just trying to tidy it up I absolutely scrapped and couldn't do anything with it but used a slightly heavier tractor and away I went so I would like to try and get the wheel weights on just to see if this actually makes it so I could but I don't know I'm rambling as usual so I shall catch you tomorrow